Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest today for a repeat visit is Wilma Zero. Although last week he told us that since we're friends, we can call him Will. So, Will, welcome back to Gambling with an Edge. Thank you. All right. Um, very recently, you wanted to go to a comedy concert at the MGM Grand here in Las Vegas, and then everything went to hell. What happened? Well, um, yeah, I went to the Brad Garrett Comedy uh, Club there. Brad Garrett wasn't there, but the comedians who were there were, um, you know, I wanted to, to see them. Um, so, so I went to the MGM, and because I'm a Platinum member, I uh, wasn't going to have to pay for any parking. So I get there, and then I realized, shoot, I forgot my my card, um, and I guess I forgot because I was just going to the comedy club. I wasn't even planning on doing any gambling. So um, I figured, okay, well, I was there early enough. I, I went to the players' club and asked them to print me off another player card because I didn't want to pay the, uh, the parking. Um, anyway, so, uh, so the player club, they said, um, we, we can't print off your card. So they escalated it to their, uh, management because there was a flag on it or something. Um, they did not that know their machine was broken. No, their machine was not broken, but they weren't really sure why they couldn't print one out. So they escalated it to their uh, management. So over the uh, the player rewards thing, the M Life rewards, and so this had taken a little while. I said, "Hey, you know, I got to go to the show," and they said, "Oh, okay. So it should be taken care of by the time you get out of the show. Just come back." So I went to the show. The c comedians were very funny, um, and so then I went back, and they said, "Okay, we got our like." supervisor to um to say okay yeah we should be able to print a card but we still can't print it we got the supervisor's name go over to the high limit area they should be able to print you off the card so i go over to the high limit area and hand them the information which had the you know supervisor's uh name that said you know fine print this guy a card so they looked into it and said, hey, there's a flag in here. And actually, it says you have been banned from all MGM properties because you self-excluded yourself. I said, what? That's crazy. I didn't self-exclude myself. So, so since it's up to me, unself-exclude me. And so then they looked into it a little bit more and they said, Oh, no, you didn't do it. The Beau Rivage did it. I said, well, this isn't the Beau Rivage. I haven't done anything here. Just, you know, give me my player's card. I just want it so I can get out of the parking garage. I'm a platinum member. I shouldn't have to pay. So then they got um, security over, and security uh, basically trespassed me from MGM, uh, but said on my way out of the parking garage, just give them my player number and they should let me out for free. Um, and I s said like, why am I being trespassed here? Uh, because we want to, um, you're, you're basically trespassed from everywhere. Um, I, I just have to say, by the way, um, for, for listeners if you go to the booth and they say, there's some flag on your card and we can't print it for you, do not go back. <laughs> like, I would have skipped the comedy show at that point and just turned around and left and paid for the parking. Because uh, it's that's always going to be. You're always getting barred when that happens. So, Well, I already had tickets to the comedy club <laughs> and I was going to get barred anyway. So I'm glad I went to the comedy show because it was yeah. good. Um, so anyway, then I was trespassed from the MGM 
And I, I said, hey, but like, what do you mean I'm trespassed from all the MGM properties? Because I was invited to the Excalibur. Um, they invited me and I have a reservation. And not only did they invite me, but they're going to give me some free play and comps. That's, that was the invitation. And you told them this at the MGM? I told them that at the MGM because I was certain there was a mistake because I hadn't done anything wrong. Certainly not in Had Las you Vegas. you counted cards at the Beau Rivage? Oh, yeah. I oh, counted yeah, cards okay. everywhere. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, so, yeah. So um, I would think, so you give the MGM time to uh, call up. The Excalibur. The Excalibur yeah. and say, this guy's coming over and in case your system's a little bit slow, he's he's... 86th everywhere. So I, um, but at least I found out. Um, so I called, you know, once I got back to my hotel, which was not at the Excalibur yet, um, I called to Excalibur to reconfirm my reservation and they reconfirmed it. And they, in addition, sent me emails saying, you know, in order to save time, use our mobile check-in, you know, please check in early, blah, blah, blah. So I have a written invitation to come, several, because I have the original reservation, then I have the most recent uh, thing saying, please check in early using the mobile system, and I had the, the thing over the phone because I reconfirmed. Um, but just in case, I uh, the hotel that I was currently staying at which is not an MGM property, I asked them if I could extend my reservation. And they said, yeah, no problem. So um, then when I went to the Excalibur, went to the desk, checked in, they gave me my room keys. And uh, at the check-in desk, they also reconfirmed again that I'm going to have certain amount of free play and a certain amount of uh, restaurant and food beverage comps. And so I thought, okay, great. So then as I'm walking to my room, I'd like just finished getting my room keys. Security approaches me and tells me to leave. I said, why I have a reservation, I just checked in. Oh, you're trespassed from here. I said, there must be some mistake. I have all these, you know, invitations, blah, blah, blah. This person just wrote on, on the check-in thing. Here's how much I get in comps and free play. And I have my room keys. So they called their supervisor. He came and he said, oh, you're not trespassed from here. So sorry for the inconvenience and... I went up to my room and threw some stuff in the safe, but I didn't bring a whole bunch of stuff because, um, you know, I still had the other hotel reservation and I thought there might be problems. So um, I just put some minimal stuff in the safe. And then I went back down to immediately use the free play before they decided to take that away from me. So I went down and tried to use free play, but I wasn't able to for whatever reason. Uh, so I went, I'm guessing I know the reason. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we all know the reason. <laughs> uh, so I went to the, um, uh, the M life rewards place because I thought, Oh, maybe they have to load it onto my card. So, um, when I went there, then they said, there's a flag on your, yeah. You know, so that whole thing. And then security approached me again there. And this time they, um, they were like, you know, you need to leave the property. I said, I just spoke with this manager, security manager, and he apologized for the, uh, you know, sorry for the inconvenience. You're not trespassed from here. And so I said, get, get him to come back. And so he came back with, I think, his supervisor as well, who um, overruled him and indeed said that uh, I was 
trespass. So I called Metro Police because I'd already checked in. I had a reservation. And so I said, these people are trying to kick me out of my room. I have a room. So I called the police. And so uh, basically... Um, the police asked, you know, their normal stuff. Has anyone taken drugs? No, not that I know of. Has, has anybody been drinking? No, not that I know of. Does anybody have any weapons? Yes, because these are security people. So they had like handcuffs and stuff that looked like billy club. And, you know, who knows? They may have had, you know, mace. You know, I don't know. But I said, yeah, it looks like they they have some weapons. So... I don't know if that made Metro take it any more seriously or not, but, uh, but anyway, so, um, then, uh, the, the head security guy basically said, you know, since you called Metro and since you have been trespassed, then if Metro shows up, you're probably going to go to jail. And, since I'm in the military, I've been in places that are probably a lot worse than a jail. So, you know, just living in the Middle East, just, you know, in a tent, you know, is probably worse than a jail cell. So I wasn't all that concerned about if I had to go to jail, but I didn't want to uh, miss my appointment with uh, Gambling with an Edge podcast <laughs> so all our listeners it is your fault that he didn't go to jail <laughs> yes your fault um so so i decided to leave peacefully and call back metro and say they didn't need to do anything that i was leaving on my own accord um so but before i left i said well wait if i'm trespassed from all of these um mgm properties i i have some chips from bellagio that i need to cash out so i mean again the same mistake telling <laughs> telling the mgm that you're going to the excalibur and now you're telling the excalibur that you're going to the bellagio and you're talking to security guards what the hell do they know about you cashing out chips at another property i mean it's just just well if crazy you know i th i thought if i really am trespassed from all these places and you know i i wish that you know bob narcessian were there with me but obviously he wasn't you know i you know i would have loved to have known what the legal stuff was but i'm not a lawyer and i didn't know so you know i said okay what do i need to do in order to cash out my chips they said, oh when you go to bellagio then just um you know the first security that you find have them escort you to the cage and um then they'll get you your money for the chips i was like, okay so i left Went to Bellagio with the chips, went in, didn't see any security, was walking toward the cashier, still didn't see any security. So I got to the cashier. When I got to the cashier, I said, please call security. And um, so they they did. And, um, you know, I said, okay, you guys know why you were called, right? Because... You know, and so immediately they started getting argumentative and said, you were supposed to call as soon as you got on the property. I said, no, I was told the first security person that I saw to have them escort me or have them call, you know, for more security to take me to the cage. Right? I didn't see anybody. So as soon as I got here, I called you guys. So, so anyway, I turned over my chips to the cashier, which was over $20,000 worth, and said, you know, I'd like to get cash for my chips. And so they took the chips and... Now, this is a CTR, so you have to give ID, right? Well, I already had given my ID and date of birth. Him, they they who already know who I am. Yeah, but you but, still have to give them right, your ID. And I yeah. didn't have any problem doing that. I wanted to get the money sure. for the chips. Yeah. And since I'm 
you know, trespass, then, you know, so what? They're going to get that anyway. Right. So, okay. So they took the chips and um, didn't give me any money. And that strikes me as a bad sign. Yeah, that <laughs> struck me as a bad sign, too. So then uh, the security starts reading me a trespass thing that I'm being trespassed off of Bellagio property. I said, okay, as soon as I get my money, I'll be happy to leave. Oh, you're not getting your money. So um, I called the gaming control board and um, explained the situation to them just as you've just heard. Um, and so, uh, they said, well, how much money is it? I told them, they said, oh, that's a lot of money. Why do you have that much? I said, well, you know, I've, I've come multiple times. I know I'm going to be, I knew I was going to be coming back. Sure enough, I'm back. I was going to play, but they trespassed me. So I just want to cash them in. So then, uh, basically the security said, we're not going to talk to you while you're on the phone with game and control. I said, well, I can put it on speaker so that everybody hears the same thing. And, uh, so basically, um, game and control told them they need to, you know, look and see if, if I've played and they asked me, they said, you know, gaming asked me, if I could provide dates of when I'd been there. And I said, yeah, I can, but not right now. I don't have my computer in front of me. Um, my computer's back in my room, but I do keep good records for tax purposes. So they said, okay, as soon as you get back to your room, provide dates to them. And um, they need to be able to verify that, that you were there. And I asked, don't they need to prove that the chips are not mine or that I'm not a patron? This does not sound like the discussion you should be having in front of security guards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So any anyway, um, the gaming control person, uh, I think they they didn't really answer that question. They just said... Uh, this is to prevent, uh, like money laundering or something like that. So, um, so anyway, I, uh, I was given a receipt for the amount over the $20,000 for the exact amount. And then I left, I, I followed exactly the instructions. When I got back to my computer, I called in, I gave them dates that I knew for sure I had been playing at, uh, Bellagio and um, and the person at the cage, I was told to give that information to the person at the cage, the supervisor at the cage, which I did, that person said they were going to pass that on to the casino manager. So several hours later, I called the casino manager and to find out like, okay, what, uh, what's happening they said oh we're we're not looking into it it's in the hands of uh the enforcement division of gaming control so i called back the agent that i'd spoken with earlier from gaming control and i said well this is what bellagio said but you told me they were going to investigate and it sounds like they aren't going to and so, so then the agent was like, oh gosh, I got to deal with this too. And <laughs> so, so, um, always good when somebody likes their job. Yeah. Well, she, she seemed competent over the phone, but you know, just having an extra thing to do, you know, nobody likes that. So, um, so anyway, supposedly she got in touch with Bellagio. I don't know. I wasn't in on that conversation that was between them. So, um, several hours after that, um, because I hadn't heard anything, I called back the Bellagio and said, okay, what's the status? They said, oh, we're not investigating. So I'm not sure if the gaming control agent just didn't get in touch with them 
or which I doubt, I think the gaming control agent was going to do her job. Um, or I think more likely they just chose not to do anything about it. So I let them know that I was going to be on this radio show and that, um, I was going to tell, you know, what happened, which you guys have heard. Um, if they didn't, uh, you know, have my money returned in a timely manner. Uh, and I told them exactly when I was going to be getting, uh, interviewed for a radio show so that several hours before that I'd call up again to find out the status, if I could come by and pick up the money or not. Um, and so since you guys heard the story and I have not yet gotten the money, then, uh, the answer was they haven't done, uh, their investigating. Um, uh, they haven't done anything. I called back, um, uh, in the morning, you know, the, the, the morning before I was going to appear on the, the radio show and asked if it was okay for me to come by and pick up the money. And they said that it had been escalated to the vice president of table games, but that's it. And, um, I tried calling that person immediately before the, um, the radio show and just got person's voicemail. The person didn't even pick up the phone. I don't know if they have caller ID, but they should have known my phone number quite well. I've given it to many people. Um, so, so that's the, the story. If, uh, I don't know if what they did was legal or not trespassing me at, you know, all these different, uh, places and well, they can trespass anybody yeah for, for any for reason. any so that, reason yeah. or for no reason yeah and uh, and so. you know this is the way that casinos cheat nowadays is they just take your money and now the onus is on you to get it back and you know you may end up i mean hopefully they will just give you your money because it's clear that you had gambled there um you know i think uh if you do have to hire a lawyer you know, you will probably get it back, but it may cost you several thousand dollars uh, to do it. But um, I think there are a lot of lessons that can be learned for APs out there about sort of mistakes made along the way that. that uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes instead of having to make them yourself. So which ones in particular are you talking about, Richard? Well, um Number one, when they told him they couldn't print his player's card, uh, I would have turned around and left. Um, even if you did end up seeing the show, going to the show, I, I would have thought they would have been waiting for you when you came out to, to trespass you. So for me, when they couldn't print the card, I would not have uh, gone forward. I would not have, A, I would never tell any casino what my plans are, what casino I'm going to go to next. Uh, I would not have tried to go to the Excalibur because that's just never going to end well. Uh, again, not tell the Bellagio. And I would have tried to get uh, other people to cash the chips at the Bellagio for you, you know, in much smaller amounts to just be able to pass them on, pass them through. Yeah. You know? And doing it in much smaller amounts, that, that certainly works because actually uh, several days prior – I was in the Bellagio. I didn't. I didn't give them that date that I was there because basically I just cashed out some of the chips that I had. I had closer to twenty five thousand uh, then and cashed out about five thousand um, by you know coloring down a craps table, playing a little bit, and then going to you know the uh, the cage with like. Twenty four hundred and seventy dollars, something like that, and then doing that another time with, a, you know, a little about the same amount. Yeah, why well, tell them that you uh, that you're in the process of structuring when you got trespassed? So you. <laughs> yeah. uh... Well, but again, Bob Nersessian has said that to do it to do that to prevent them from getting your name is not the same as doing it to prevent 
you know, structuring or, or I mean, to pre- avoid taxes or, or things right. like that. And, and I just wanted to prevent them getting my name. Yeah. And by the way, if you call them and they say, yeah, we have your money, I would just say, can you, they already have your, your real name and address. Oh, yeah, they have, I'm sure they have everything. Yeah, yeah, well, then I would ask them to just send you a check. Well, I would rather have cash in hand as opposed to waiting who knows how long for yeah, maybe a check to arrive or, oh, they forgot to put it in the mail or it got lost in the mail true. or they say they put it in the mail and they didn't and then they say it must have gotten lost in the mail, something like that. Yeah. Now... Um, we're taping this before the show, before it airs. So, in real time, when were when did you when were you at the Bellagio compared to right now when we're taping the show? Was this one day? For when, at which when, time? When, when they took your twenty thousand? Oh, there. um, that was on August fifteenth. All right, so we're taping this on August 16th. So uh, things are still in process. Now, we're going to be posting this show a week and a half from now. Can you, we, we will post in the notes on gamblingwithanedge.com any updates, any brief updates you have on yes i got the money or no i didn't i'm suing their ass whatever it <laughs> is uh i don't we don't want to uh, post a 10 minute update on well a, or you can just put it in the comment section at gamblingwithanedge.com you know yeah, you're certainly yeah. welcome to do that yeah I'll, I'll let you know whether i got the money or it's still in process or what what the what's happening yeah yeah all right so right now we're going to be doing some commercials And then we'll be back to ask Will some more questions. The South Point has more than 10,000 games returning more than 99%. This is more such games than anyone else has. In September, beginning September 5th, from Sunday through Saturday, is the Moonshine Giveaway. Earn 1,500, excuse me, 1,200 points on slots video reels or video poker, and you redeem a South Point 400 commemorative bottle of City Lights Shine Moonshine. You keep your points, limit of three per week. This will happen four weeks, so each person can get up to 12 bottles. These are quart bottles. Moonshine, these run between 80 and 82 percent. It's pretty strong stuff. And they come in six different flavors. Hey guys, this is Colin from blackjackapprenticeship.com. And if you're serious about card counting, I'd encourage you to check out the Blackjack Apprenticeship membership. It has the training tools you'll need to beat the game, like our comprehensive video course and our training suite, so you can learn each skill and virtually test yourself before ever stepping foot in a casino. It also includes the tools you'll need to succeed, like our pro betting software, casino database, results tracking software, and access to a community of like-minded advantage players to network with in our members forum and chat room software. You can find out more at blackjackapprenticeship.com. At videopoker.com, it's the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, this allows you to get correction on most of the games. Game of the week, bonus streak, ultimate X. This is a 10 coin per line version of the game. Like every Ultimate X, you earn multipliers on this hand to be played off the next hand. Compared to regular Ultimate X, the multipliers are much harder to get, where you typically need three of a kind rather than a pair of jacks or better. But when you get them, you get them for several hands in a row. The Wizard of Odds has worked out and published a strategy for the 8, 6, jacks or better 10 play version of this game. This is a generous gift to the player community. The game, however, only returns 98.74% when played perfectly and 98.65% if you use the wizard's simplified strategy perfectly. Except for unusual slot clubs and promotions, this is way too low for profitable play. All right, we're back talking to Will, formerly known as Wilma Zero. 
Uh, tell us about Bank of America and your experience there. Oh, okay. So, so I um, had Bank of America account, and um, as you guys probably know, there's an investment uh, company that um, I, I believe they bought Bank of America, but somehow they're they're related. Bank of America either bought the investment company or the investment company bought Bank of America. One Merrill Lynch, right? Is it? Um, it yeah, that sounds sounds right. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, so I found that I was able to do more stuff at the investment company than at my just normal mutual fund um, stuff. Like I was able to do, you know, short sales and stuff, stuff like that. A little bit uh, more more complicated than just investing in mutual funds. So I put um, a fair amount of money with uh, with the investment company. And they um, they said, well, we can use your money as collateral to do short selling on uh, basically the the S and P five hundred. So some spider they were short selling that, and they said that should increase my uh, return by like you know one or two percent, something like that. But I mean that adds up over over a long period of time and for big enough amounts right and um okay so so they were doing this um short selling in like 2018 ish somewhere around there where basically the stock market was going up constantly Short selling, you make money when the market either stays flat or goes down. So I was losing a ton of money because they were trying to gain me an extra 1% or 2%. Um, so then Bank of America told me I wasn't welcome to bank there and... Almost simultaneously, the investment company said that I had to close my account there and put my investments somewhere else. What was their reason for this? They did not give me a reason. Now, I suspect that it was because at Bank of America, I had done multiple transactions of withdrawing more than $10,000 and redepositing more than ten thousand dollars, and you know we would always fill out the the uh, CTRs. Um, I wasn't doing anything, you know, shady. It's just you know if you gamble for a lot of money, then you need a lot of money. So so I was you know withdrawing and redepositing more than ten thousand dollars multiple times, and they probably got sick of dealing with the paperwork. So that's my guess. I never received a yeah, reason. Yeah, I have heard a lot of people getting backed off from banks for multiple deposits and withdrawals of yeah. over ten thousand. So, so, so anyway, um, at the investment side, they managed to lose for me about fifty thousand dollars of my money doing the this short selling and then having to buy back the position at a worse price. And so I, uh, I got a hold of an investment attorney and explained the situation. And I said, you know, they told me that this was supposed to, you know, gain me a couple percent, um, over the long run. And they made, they're making me close the account. Uh, so it's either before I've reached the long run. So I never got the chance to get the one or two additional percent or these people are incompetent. And the guy goes, I'll take your case. <laughs> so so um, basically he had me send my spreadsheet of all the trades that they made, which I kept track of. You know, every time they made a trade, they had to inform me of what they were doing with my money. So I sent it to him, 
probably he said shoot this is the easiest money i've ever made because he probably just took that put a postage stamp on it on his attorney letterhead sent it off and very quickly uh got a settlement for basically the full amount that they lost um we recovered now of course the attorney had his uh his fee so of the like fifty thousand dollars that they lost of mine i got back forty thousand and the attorney got like ten thousand but losing ten thousand is way better than losing fifty thousand yeah absolutely yeah. for sure but i'm actually surprised at how this worked out when you invest i'm sure you signed a paper acknowledging that investment returns are not guaranteed it's uh you know there's no crystal ball as to exactly how the future is going to go and that you're entering into this agreement on your own risk and some such. Uh, uh, so I would have thought they would have given your lawyer more pushback than they actually did. Well, I guess that's oh, what but you, I'm happy for, for you. them. I mean, probably 50,000 is probably a lot less than what their lawyers cost them. You know, if you drag it out. I mean, because they could easily spend many hundreds of thousands of dollars on lawyers dragging this, you know, and, and the thing could drag out a long time. So, yeah. So I, I don't know what went on between uh, my attorney and and either their attorney or, or them directly, but he got the settlement uh, fairly mm -hmm. quickly. And so I was... Uh, happy with that or at least satisfied with it i didn't think it was worth trying to sue them for more money so all right you um you have in your notes a story about you trusting a bum and the <laughs> bum trusting you oh yeah this is sort of interesting i um that's why we asked the question yeah i was walking around um one of these uh, casinos just looking to see if there's, uh, you know, possibilities for any advantage slot plays. And uh, a bum was sitting on a machine and, well, at the chair in front of the machine. And he must have noticed me by the way I was looking at machines. And he just said, hey, you want part of this? And I looked and he had what looked like a very good advantage play on a slot machine. And so I said, well, why aren't you just doing the whole thing? He goes, I don't want to go broke. So it was because we had to do like $3.75 each spin, and who knows how many spins it would take to actually re realize the, uh, like the jackpot situation. So... Um, you know, he probably didn't know the term risk of ruin or anything like that, but he, I mean, he may have been a bum, but he wasn't stupid, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, so anyway, so he, uh, he said, um, you can have two thirds, I'll just take one third. And, and so, so I said, what do you mean by that? And he goes, well, like if I put in $10, you put in $20 and then whatever we get out, then you get two thirds, I get one third. Okay. So, so did that. And, um, who did the spinning? Well, I put my player card into the machine because I figured if there was some situation that arised, then it's the person who pushes the button, not, not the player's card. Well, some, somebody had addressed that, like someone can't just run through a casino, pushing a bunch of buttons and, well, no, but there was this famous case of the guy who had the hooker in Florida yeah. where she was pushing the button and took his six-figure jackpot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and he stayed friends with her afterward. I don't think so. I think he oh. sued her, and yeah. uh, <laughs> and I think he lost, but I, I don't oh, remember. Gosh. Well, anyway, this was for small enough money that I guess I was willing to take the chance if you were ripped off for twenty dollars life wouldn't end or oh, right now the twenty thousand that's a little bit different but yeah twenty dollars by some bum you know he probably needs the money more than i do anyway so but anyway um so we did the play and then um he i guess wasn't all that great at 
math because like once we got the jackpot and then the you know the credits were up to whatever it was i said okay so i can just give you money for one third of this amount and we should be done right he goes no we got to cash it out and go to the cashier and get it and then split it up and so one for uh, him two (laughs) for you right one for him yeah so anyway um he turned out to be trustworthy i mean we split it he got one third i got two thirds so he ended up making like you know fifteen dollars and i got twenty eight dollars something like that you know (laughs) of profit so anyway so we had a a strange uh barely trust of each other but we ended up both being honorable well good not much of a story over thirty dollars (laughs) but Uh, here I was thinking it, this was going to be like a must hit by 5,000 or something. No, and, no, it wasn't uh, anything big. It yeah. was just a, an interesting situation, I thought. So oh. you had um, something where they took you to jail, right? In a casino? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is much more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to those kind of okay. stories. All right. Now, Richard was disappointed in the one that I like. So <laughs> let me see if I can arrange to be disappointed <laughs> in the one he likes. So I was at a casino and. Um, you know, do my counting cards and earning comps and actually using my own ID and stuff. That, so I was earning comps and, and winning money and getting comps. Um, so uh, at one point, I got a certified letter, uh, return receipt or, you know, something like that um, from that casino. And I made the mistake of accepting it. So, listeners, this is another mistake. <laughs> Never accept certified mail. Exactly. So, I any- had one of those where my son signed for it. Not, you know, he was about, I don't know. 10 or something. Is he still alive? I, he is, but he now knows never sign for a mail. Yeah. So, I uh, I signed for it, got it. It basically said that I'm trespassed from that uh, property. Um, but I can appeal it. Uh, but if I don't appeal it within 30 days, then the decision is final. So now is this an Indian property or, a? um, I, I'm not sure it's a Maryland live casino. So whatever, uh, <laughs> that's at, they have the live casinos in several States. I don't think they're Indian property. I, I don't know. So. so Maryland Live Casino, you guys might want to, you know, pay attention. To this. Um, so I used all, basically their exact wording. I said, I am appealing this trespass decision. And if I don't hear anything back within 30 days, I will assume that my appeal is granted. Since they'd given me 30 days, I figured I'd give them 30 days. And I sent it to them the exact same way that I had received this. It was a return receipt uh, guarantee, so someone there had to sign for it. So I, uh, I got the return receipt back. Someone had signed for it. Uh, more than 30 days later, still hadn't heard anything. So seemed like my appeal had been granted. <laughs> oh, man. So I went back there, um, but just in case I didn't use my player's card, I did. I did actually try to see if my comps had been reinstated or anything, but they had been zeroed out. Um, so you did put your card in the machine to find out, or into a kiosk. Y- yes. Yeah. So. Um, so anyway, I got a suspicion Richard's going <laughs> to yeah. say that was. Yeah, a mistake. Richard might say something here. <laughs> yeah. Was another mistake made by yeah, any chance? Yeah. yeah, just going back after thirty days. I mean, oh, give you it waited at least six months, days. or you know, but yeah. So so anyway, then I was I was playing some, and uh, then security came up. And they got the police and I was handcuffed and thrown in the back of a police car and taken to jail. Uh Wow. And so then at, uh, you know, after several hours in. uh, And the arrest was for trespassing. Yes. Wow. 
So then after, you know, several hours in jail, finally there's like a, uh, I don't know, a public defender maybe or something shows up and says like, do you have the means for your own lawyer? And I was being honest. So I said, yeah, I do have my own means. He said, well, do you have a lawyer that you know of here? He was asking all the questions to, to try to get me out of jail as soon as possible. And I was too stupid to know what he was doing. So, oh, no, I don't know anybody up here yet. Is he, okay, we'll get you out on your own recognizance. It's, a, you know, like right now. And but you're going to have a court date. And between now and then, you got to either find your own thing or notify us so that public defense, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so. Um, I don't live in Maryland, so I had to find a Maryland attorney and, you know, I had copies of the letter that I sent back to the casino, the letter that they'd sent to me. And this attorney was like, oh, they never responded. There's, there shouldn't be any problem. So we let me guess. You didn't pay a lot of money for this lawyer. Why? Wait, I, I agree with the lawyer. It sounds like it shouldn't be any problem. It's a, first of all, it's a trespass. Like it's it's nothing. But anyway, go, yeah. on, go ahead. Yeah. So so the uh, I, I looked up what what happens if I accept the penalty of the trespass thing and, and basically just write something to the court, say like, OK, sorry, guys, I trespassed. What's my fine? The fine would have been like fifteen hundred dollars and no jail time or, you know, just it's on my record, you know, that type of thing. So and the the lawyer was going to charge me fifteen hundred dollars to do his thing. So I was like, OK, whatever. I figured it was fifteen hundred either way, and if I guess if the lawyer loses, then I got to pay another fifteen hundred, probably. But hopefully, the lawyer, you know, when he said there shouldn't be a problem, then I trusted him. Okay, so we go to court, and the lawyer, the first thing the lawyer says is, okay, probably representative from the casino is not even going to show up, so then it'll be dismissed, and the whole thing's thrown out. Then he he saw. The person from the casino goes, oh, the guy from the casino showed up. So <laughs> they must really not like you. I said, yeah, they don't like me. So uh, so then, um, you know, the casino said something like, we trespassed him and he showed back up. He, he was trespassing. And my lawyer said, you know, what, what I said was, you know, the letter said I could appeal it. I appealed it. And, you know here's a copy of the the letter it gave 30 days which is a reasonable amount of time to respond to the appeal they didn't respond and this says if you don't respond in this time then you know i'm assuming that the appeal is granted and the judge goes they don't have to respond and my lawyer gave the judge a weird look like how does he ever know that his appeal is either granted or denied and the judge just said they don't have to respond. So. Wow. Um, so basically, since I had already, then it got to the, what type of penalty do I have to pay? Because I was trespassing. <coughs> Excuse me. So they got it so that I would just be on like probation. And if I don't go to that casino for three years, then this will be expunged from my record, which is a good thing because, you know, I have to report all arrests and, you know, stuff like that to the military for my top secret clearance, all that stuff. But I'm sure the military, the government already knew anyway. Sure. So um, anyway, so after three years, supposedly it's expunged from the record. But did you look into suing them for for having you arrested? Although I, I guess that'd be hard if you're I found didn't. guilty of actually trespassing. Yeah. So I just I just left it at uh, at that. And an an interesting thing is just because something is expunged from the record, um, so a a normal person like us would not be able to find that in the record. But the government still knows. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they it's not it. expunged from their record. Right. Right. 
yeah, any copies that were made uh, <coughs> do not get expunged. Any copies made before the expungement. Uh, yeah. All right. We got time for one more question before we're going to have to let you go. Um, you were a Caesars Entertainment 7 Star. And you found a, an AP play that we haven't discussed yet on the air. Would you tell us about that? Okay. Um, when, when you get to, <coughs> excuse me, when you get to seven star, they give you all these um, benefits. So like at seven star, you get five $100 um, food vouchers. Um, you get to attend a special event. Uh, and another thing is that you get $1,200 uh, for airfare to go to, um, you know, some Caesars property and then stay there for like up to four or five days um, at, you know, no, no expense for the, for the hotel stay. Well, for the hotel room. Um, so I figured, you know, they don't say, hey, you live near a casino. We're not going to give you the food, you know, eat at your home. So I figured, you know, I was entitled to the $1,200 for airfare, even if I chose not to fly. So I um, had a friend uh, drive me to... Um, New Orleans, there's a Harrah's there. And so we figured we'd have fun in New Orleans and, you know, he's doing the driving so he can share in the, uh, the hotel room and the food comps and stuff like that. So we go there and, you know, we made the, the hotel reservation there at Harrah's. So we get there and, um, so I go to collect the $1,200 and, and, um, I figure, you know, if, if they owe you something or you think that you deserve something, make it easy for them to give it to you. So I had bought a refundable airplane ticket that was over $1,200. And then, you know, I just got it refunded, but I still had the receipt for it and all, all that stuff. So I figured if they choose to ask me for my plain stuff, I could present it to them. Which my experience is they do ask you in New Orleans and you have to play first for a certain amount of time. Well, I, I didn't have to play first, but they did ask me for the, um, the airplane thing. So I showed them my refundable ticket. Um, and so they, they said, well, we didn't, we didn't know you were flying in. And, and I said, well, whose fault is that? Weren't, and then I asked them, weren't you supposed to meet me at the airport with a limo also? And so then they, uh, they oh, okay, well, well, they just mumbled something and, and got the $1,200 loaded onto my card. And luckily, my friend was smart enough to just not say anything like, but we drove here. That would have, I would have had to punch him. Yeah. <laughs> He shouldn't have even been at the cage with you or wherever yeah. you were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're out of time. Next time he's on, he actually has other stories about people who speak up at the wrong time. But that's going to be for another day. Um, at the end of our show, we have a recommended section. So Richard has decided to take the week off from that. And so I have a recommended that involves Richard. As you know, we're in storytelling, and on Sunday, August 29th, we are on, in a free, together, we are featured storytellers in, uh, they're calling it Deja True, uh, and he and I tell the same story that is true for each of us. And he talks for a minute, and I talk for a minute, and he talks for a minute, and I talk for a minute, and back and forth. Goes about six or seven minutes. It relates to gambling. 
um, we think many of you would find that interesting. So that's our, that's my recommended. Uh, Will, formerly known as Will Mazero, do you have a recommended for us? Um, I I do. This is just a, a guilty pleasure. Um, I like watching this show called Below Deck. Um, it's it's about these the crew and people who charter these ultra luxury yachts. And there's just a lot of drama because the people are in such close quarters and uh, the crew are just normal people, but the people chartering them are ultra rich. And um, it's it's just uh, funny to see how they interact with each other and uh, just guilty pleasure. What is this on? Where is it? Uh, gosh, I can't remember what uh, but it's a streaming channel. service. It, or is yeah, it live? It, um, it might be on Bravo TV. Okay, we'll find it. I don't know. It. We'll you, put it in the show notes, but we'll find it. It's called Below Deck. Yes. Yeah, that sounds... I, w- I would watch that. It, it kind of sounds like a uh, modern-day Downton Abbey on the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. So thank you, Wilma Zero. Thank you, Will, whichever name you like. Thank you, Richard. Go out and hit lots of royal flushes, everybody. Good day.